So today we are going to talk about an important topic called guided biopsies. As we all know to diagnose cancer, we need to study tissue obtained from the lesion which is clinically suspected to be a cancer. So this tissue is obtained from the lesion by a procedure which is called as a biopsy. So there are different modalities by which we obtain the biopsy. Dr. Parit, can you explain to us how do we obtain this biopsy? Sure. So uh, to obtain the tissue, there are several methods. Uh, one is excision where we, where a surgeon goes in and takes out a chunk of tissue. And the other is uh, today's topic that is image guided biopsy. So what we do is uh, we use the, we get the help of imaging, imaging modalities such as ultrasound or a CT. And uh, this guided biopsy, we usually like uh, reserve for, uh, for patients where the lesion is deep within the body, seated within, it is not visible. So image, gui image guided biopsy is done using ultrasound or CT or a mammogram. Okay, so we usually under ultrasound or like whatever the modality we are using, we first visualize the abnormal tissue. After visualizing the abnormal tissue, we choose an entry point. And uh, from the entry point to the abnormal tissue, we have to put a needle. That is where the needle tracks. So I'll be showing how it is done. So this is the coaxial needle. Usually we use coaxial needle uh, or it can be done directly by puncturing with the uh, using the biopsy gun. So now uh, after giving local anesthesia to the entry point and along the needle tract, we use this coaxial and under ultrasound or CT guidance, uh, we'll pass this needle and uh, till the point where the tip is tip lies within the abnormal tissue. So after the after we the make sure that the tip is within the abnormal tissue, I'll remove this stylet. So the needle is hollow here. This is the semi-automatic biopsy gun, and I can pass this semi-automatic biopsy gun. Once I, I am passing it, it comes, the end comes out into the abnormal tissue. Okay. So that is the, uh, that is the use of this coaxial. The main thing is, this is a single puncture. So I can pass, pass this gun as many times as possible without pricking again and again. So now I'll tell how this biopsy gun works. So this is semi-automatic biopsy gun which has a spring inside, yes. you, I load it, yeah. then you push this trigger, it cuts. So once this uh, tip is within the abnormal tissue, so one, uh, after it is triggered, you hear a snap sound. So you like, uh, you should not like be, uh, you get afraid. One uh, after uh, when you are hearing this snap sound, it is perfectly okay. It is just that the biopsy gun is doing its job. It will cut a thin strip of tissue, which will lodge inside this wedge, and uh, we, that tissue will be sent to the pathologist. Similarly, there is another gun. We call it as uh, automatic gun, fully automatic. You load it. It just gets triggered. And again, the tissue in this depression or the wedge, the tissue gets collected, which we send it for the lab analysis. So all these procedures are done under local anesthesia or do uh, you do? The, the anesthesia, yeah. Good question. The anesthesia may vary. So most of the 90% of the procedure can be done under local anesthesia itself. So local anesthesia is a an, uh, type of anesthesia where we just, uh, we just inject uh, lignocaine into that part of the area where we want to put the needle. So just uh, we mark the point, as I said, like we choose the entry point. Into that entry point, we infiltrate some like 5 to 10 ml of local anesthesia and that only the area around that uh, and the path of the needle gets numb. So the patient like uh, won't feel the pain usually. Relatively, a relatively a painless procedure and of course uh, the local anesthesia itself is an injection. So otherwise the rest of the procedure will be painless relatively. The other thing is uh, usually in pediatric patient where you feel the patient will not cooperate. There we, uh, we, we, we can use sedation or very rarely we can use general anesthesia also. Okay.
correct so as the case requires correct 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 and the implications of this is with when you use a local anesthesia you will be fully awake fully conscious and uh, it will not restrict your movements i mean like you will be completely ambulatory so the patient can just after the procedure after the observation time he can go go home uh, the other when you are say sedated uh, the sedation effect like should go away it takes a while usually uh, we admit the patient and it is not advised for a sedated patient to go home on the same day or like uh, get back to the routine activities uh, usually uh, the next day would be better and general anesthesia uh, it, it the effect uh, to go away like usually is longer than sedation okay so it is somewhat like an uh, outpatient procedure correct it is done mm. under full guidance yes. and expertise exactly exactly the reason uh, we monitor is there could be some uh, some things can go wrong uh, so like the bleeding can happen especially in organs very vascular organs like liver kidney mm. and other areas uh, the since we have taken out some tissues and there is a needle tracking through that uh, after we remove the needle that from the tract there can be bleeding uh, so we have to monitor the pay, monitor the patient and other thing is whenever there is a, uh, a like a lung biopsy there uh, the lung uh, air can leak from the lung parenchyma into the space between the lung and the chest wall that we call as pneumothorax as and more and more accumulates in the in, in that space it will compress the normal lung so the lung cannot expand and the patient can have breathing difficulties in that in that case we might have to put a small like pigtail and drain out the air and then like we'll observe and send the patient home so there's one more thing i think we have not mentioned patient may be on some medications which you might have to stop correct correct Pre precautions uh, from the patient side is uh, usually uh, the patient the patient should be aware the, of any uh, allergic drug reactions sometimes we might have, we might be giving contrast for a CT guided biopsy and uh, some patients will be having uh, allergy for uh, local anesthesia also so in that case if you uh, if you already know uh, you all uh, your allergies you have to inform us and then the other thing other important thing is whenever uh, we are taking biopsy from the inner organs as i said the risk of bleeding is there there are certain drugs where the the command of the category as blood thinners they usually like uh, do not allow the blood to clot fast quickly so these uh, these drugs you will be taking when you have a heart disease usually the doctor pre will prescribe when you have an heart disease or a so, some kind of stroke or uh, or a movement disorder or like when you have heart stent or a peripheral stent somewhere in the body so you have to be very clear and you have, the patient has to inform this priorly to the doctor so that you you are taking such a such a drug and most of the times you'll be told that uh, like you've been given blood thinner so in case you uh, the patient is having blood thinner taking blood thinner depending on the site and uh, the risk involved in that particular procedure we might have to uh, stop the uh, blood thinners for like three days or five days or sometimes longer and then it can be continued after the after procedure. the procedure they can be continued like if uh, the procedure goes well without any bleeding complications so depending on which procedure and which site the complications can vary and right. whatever the possible complications are it will be explained to the patient before the procedure so right. that they understand it fully well exactly okay. exactly in fact the patient and the attenders will be appraised about the how it is done what, what can go wrong and uh, a consent will be taken just uh, before the procedure okay so after dr bharat does this procedure which as we all know requires a lot of expertise so we get tissue something like this so we receive the sample of the tissue we can see these small tissues inside in the appropriate fixative medium this tissue is subjected to chemical processing after this it is converted into a tissue tissue block which is called as a paraffin wax block the tissue is embedded inside this so this is it is safely preserved within this block now from this further slides are made like this for example this tissue is studied under the microscope by the pathologist and the diagnosis is arrived however we do not stop at this many times for diagnosis of cancer we need additional tests 
one such test is the immunohistochemistry this is one slide there can be anywhere from 2 to 15 slides for a case to diagnose or to do this test of immunohistochemistry after this test we can provide additional information on the cancer now for diagnosis of cancer we do not stop at this many times we need additional testings so again we take this paraffin block and do whatever additional tests are required such as immunohistochemistry so the number of immunohistochemistry tests may vary depending upon the case this is one such example so like this it may vary anywhere from 3 slides to 15 slides also each time the block is cut and this test is performed now after doing these tests we may need some more tissue to do some advanced tests called as a next generation sequencing depending upon the case so these are the uh, tests which are done with the tissue now in very rare cases we may need some more tissue because we may need some additional information in such scenarios we may ask the interventional radiologist to repeat the procedure or in some scenarios where there may be two possible diagnoses for example a cancer and a tuberculosis in such or two cancers two different types of cancers in which a diff the biopsy may be required from a different site so what are the challenges you face when you have to repeat a procedure or do the procedure in the first time itself? The challenges uh, that we face uh, could be the location of the lesion. Sometimes the location of the lesion, uh, first of all, the size could be small, very small. Uh, if the size is very small, the approach can be challenging. Other thing is the lesion located around a vital organ mm -hmm. or like vital structures such as a artery or like a you nerve. Know, or any like uh, when you take a shot the surrounding structure if it is damaged it it can be important uh, means like it can uh, some major complication can happen the other thing is uh, you asked is repeat biopsy usually during repeat biopsy if the lesion is very small again the challenges remains the same otherwise the repeat biopsy the uh, the reason where, why why the repeat biopsy is asked is is important. Sometimes the repeat biopsy is asked because the tissue is not adequate. That time the approach is same. Like and we have to just make sure we have we hit the right location. The uh, the other area is even though the lesion is large, some areas can be necrotic. So there we have to revisit. Uh, where we have taken, we have to rethink about uh, changing the location site of the. Uh, biopsy within the lesion we have to uh, look uh, we have to take the biopsy from that area which is active on the pet or the solid part we usually we avoid the central part or the, and uh, peripheral margin and all like so you would choose the most representative area on the imaging and yeah the representative the area on the imaging uh, means in especially in the case of a large image we have to take the uh, we have to take the sample which is viable it should not be a dead tissue. So you, uh, that uh, we decide or uh, radiologically either uh, that's what I was telling like we uh, usually the margin will be more viable. The central part of the big lesion will be necrotic. The tissues will be dead and uh, if we get the dead tissues to you, even though the needle is was uh, the tissue was taken from within the tumor, mm -hmm. yeah, you may not be able to diagnose it. So, so these are some of the challenges that you face when you do the procedure. So as we can understand, it's a very uh, complex procedure and it requires good expertise, a good uh, discussion between the clinician, the radiologist and the pathologist. So basically it's teamwork to get good tissue and early diagnosis for the patients. Mm -hmm.